Ah, duplicates are the worst. I've got your back with four simple methods to deal with duplicates once and for all. Whether you want to highlight the duplicates for easy review or get rid of them altogether, these methods will work for you. We'll be covering situations with duplicate values in a single column and entire rows that are duplicates. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. You can optimize all of your spreadsheets with my free masterclass, The Spreadsheet Tune-Up. In just five videos, you'll learn how to upgrade every spreadsheet. Start now and you'll have more efficient and user-friendly spreadsheets right away. Let's start with a very user-friendly feature, which is to highlight the duplicate values. We're not going to remove them, just highlight them. So if you select an entire table and then go up to conditional formatting, then choose highlight cells rules. It's where you can choose rules that will highlight cells a specific color. And then go down to duplicate values and you can choose from any of these, um, any of these like default options or you can go down to custom format and customize it. I'm fine with this yellow fill. You can see what happened is it highlighted anything that was duplicated. So even these columns where there's only a few options available so obviously there's going to be duplicates that's just not useful information. It is useful though to see where the name column is duplicated. So I'm going to go back control Z and then actually only highlight the column that I care about and then do the same exact thing. I'll just click okay. And now we can see for easy review which are the rows that are duplicated, which values are duplicated in this column. And then if you have an if, if you have your data set up as an Excel table, you can use this filter button and go to filter by color. And now the whole table is filtered to only show the duplicated values. You can sort this however you want and even if they're not next to each other the duplicates still appear. With this approach one issue you may find is that there may be duplicates in that one column but they're not actually an entire duplicate record. So how can we highlight only the rows that are completely duplicated? To do this, we need a helper column and we're going to use the count if s function. This is going to be so easy if you have your data formatted as an Excel table. So start by clicking on the first column and when you hover over the header, a little black arrow appears. Don't go all the way to the top, but go like in the middle and you can see this black arrow and that see that now it's selected the header, but if you go like this, it's selecting everything but not the header. Then comma and then the next argument is the the first column but only the first row. You can see up here it says name because that's the name of the of this column in square brackets. That refers to the entire data column comma and then the at symbol is a special structured reference that refers to the name column but for the current row. Now we're going to do the same exact thing, just selecting the entire column and then selecting the current row for that column for every single, whoops, for every single column. And what this is going to do, I'm going to close it now, is count the number of rows where all of these values are equal to each other. So you can see here this is one because there is only one, this is a unique row. Everything is different from every other column. Here you can see these are actually duplicated and we knew that they were according to the name column, but they're entirely duplicate rows. So now let's go down to that one that we had over here. They appear to be duplicates because the name column is duplicated, but they're not actually the same. So that's why this helper column is not equal to two. The great thing about this is that if you had three duplicates, if we have three, four, any number of duplicated rows, you would easily be able to see it. So now let's add the highlighting. First, I'm going to clear the rules. Go here to clear rules from this table to get rid of that. Then I'm going to select the entire table, all the data, go up to conditional formatting, and go to new rule. 
Then I'm going to go to use a formula to determine which cells to, to format. If you want to learn more in depth about conditional formatting, I have a whole video about that. I will link it in the cards. So this formula is going to be if this helper column right here is greater than one. Now we need to remove the absolute reference from the row so that no matter which row is being um, considered, it's going to be taking the helper column from that row. So if it's if the helper column is greater than one, then true. And if it's not greater than one, false. Then we will choose a formatting. I'm just going to fill it with any old color and click OK. Click OK. And now we can see that only the rows that are completely duplicates have been highlighted. So here's this one where the two names are the same, but it's not an exact duplicate across all columns. So that has not been shown. And now we can hide this column. And let me show you how this works. Let's see if we duplicate this entire thing. But if we change a value for this one, it's no longer highlighted because it's only highlighting where there's an entire row that's duplicated. Next, let's talk about the several ways that you can actually remove duplicates once you find them without doing it manually. This method is probably my favorite because I use it all the time and it's in the data tab. It's just a button called remove duplicates over here. And if you have your data sorted or formatted as an Excel table, it will um, automatically um, detect these headers and you can just click OK here and it tells you there were three duplicate values found and they were removed. There are 40 unique values. So what happened here? Well, any rows that were entirely duplicates, like we were just talking about, were removed. However, there are some, um, there are some rows where the name is the same, but the values are not the same. So these were not removed. If you have all of the columns checked, it will only remove the duplicates that are entirely duplicated. I'm going to go control Z and go back. Now let's see what happens if we wanted to remove all of the duplicates from just the name column. You would go to remove duplicates and then uncheck everything except for the one column that you want to remove the duplicates. So let's see, here we have Norbert, Norbert. There's a row for not attending and then a row for attending is after that. And you can see now there were five duplicate values found and removed. So it definitely removed more values. And Norbert, we kept the first row. So because the first row said not attending, that's the one that was kept. So now I'm going to go back again, because what if you knew that there was duplicates, but you wanted to keep the one where the response was attending. Here we have the same situation for Sandra. The not attending is sorted first. So before you go and remove the duplicates, it's very fast. But before you do that, you should sort the data set in the way that you want it to remove the duplicates because it will always remove the um, it will always keep the first row. So now we're going to do it again. And this time we want it to keep the attending record and remove the not attending record. So let's do the same thing again. Unselect all and then only select name. And you can see five duplicates were found again. And now let's go down to Norbert. Here we have the row that says that he was attending. And here Sandra again attending. So while before you use the remove duplicates button, make sure your data is sorted appropriately. The next method uses the unique function. And if you have your data formatted as an Excel table, you can use the name of the table right here. Unique training response. And that's all you need. Now this grabs the whole table, but you can see there's five less rows because it removed all the duplicates. It's only going to keep 
the rows that are completely unique. So here we can see Anderson McDonald, Mc, McConnell. These were a completely duplicated row and it only kept one of them. But here you can see this guy, Andrew, had two responses and I actually did keep all of them because they are not entirely duplicated rows. The downside of this method is that it populates missings with a zero and it doesn't automatically format the dates. But the plus side is that it is dynamic. So when you update the table, the result also updates. Another con is that you can't remove duplicates based on a single column. It's always going to only remove the duplicates that are entirely duplicated rows. The last method we're going to explore is to use Power Query. We're going to start in the data tab and then go to from table slash range. Your data has to be formatted as an Excel table. So click on from table slash range and then this will open up the Power Query editor. And this is what the Power Query editor looks like. You can see it took the entire table and put it into this window so we can see what's going on. And the way to remove duplicates is so easy. There is actually a button where you go to remove rows and then just click remove duplicates. This will, let's see if I can, yeah. This will remove rows containing duplicated values in the currently selected columns. So if you want to remove entirely duplicated rows, you should select all of the tables, so or all of the columns. So hold down control and select all of the columns and then go to remove rows, remove duplicates. Now you can see it did remove the duplicates, but it kept the um, the rows where the name was duplicated, but it wasn't entirely duplicated. Those were not removed. And also here you can see it is case sensitive. So even though these two names and the entire row is duplicated, it didn't remove it because these are not exactly the same name. So let's solve those, those two problems individually. I'm going to go over here to the applied steps and just cancel that remove duplicates and you can see it reverted back to the previous step. So we have everything. So what we're going to do here is do some data cleaning first. So if you know that there are some different cases in your data, but you want to actually remove those duplicates, go over to the transform tab and then over to format and just choose one of these. Like I'm going to uppercase. Now the names will all be in uppercase. And then when I go back to, oh, I have to select everything again and go back to remove rows, remove duplicates. Now you can see it did remove that second Anderson row. Now, what about the case where you want to remove duplicates based on one single column? For example, here's Norbert. He has two responses. The first is not attending. The second is attending. Same for Sandra. There's two responses, not attending, attending. We want to keep only the attending. We did this in the second method, which is remove duplicates, but it's a little different in Power Query. The two big differences is there's a difference in how you sort data. It looks the same because it has this filter button. However, when you're filtering an Excel table, you would filter the lower level column first, then the upper level column. So you would filter the responses, not attending, attending. Then you would filter the, or sort, sorry. You would sort the name column next and that would get it so that you would have all the names alphabetically and then within each name, the responses would be alphabetical. In Power Query, it's exactly the opposite. So if you wanted to sort, sort it that way, so that all the names are alphabetical and then within the name, the responses are alphabetical, you start with the name column. And if this, and then you would go to response. And if this doesn't make sense to you, just experiment with the sorting order and take a look and make sure that it is sorted the way that you want it to be. Now, this looks perfect. Here we have Norbert and the attending row is first. So I'm going to select the name column, go to remove rows and remove duplicates. But oh no, look what happened. It kept the not attending row. 
So this is a weird quirk of Power Query, um, but there is a simple fix, and it's not what you think. It's not just that Power Query is keeping the last row. It has to do with how um, Excel Power Query applies these steps. For some reason, it does not actually um, sort the data in the sorted rows. It probably puts it all together into one query so that it doesn't it doesn't work it just keeps a random row from the from the original table or from the from the table after the sorted rows so what we have to do here is a little tiny tiny bit of coding we're going to open up this box um, in the sorted rows applied step and to the beginning add the command table dot buffer and then open parentheses and then to the end close parentheses what this does is after this step it forces Excel to load the entire table as is before it applies the next step now hit enter then we can close this then go to remove duplicates and it just applied that step now we can go down to Norbert no that's not Norbert there's Norbert and we can see we have the attending row is kept also for Sandra, the attending row was kept because it actually applied that sort. So that's just an extra little fix you have to do if you're gonna do this in Power Query. So now we're done. We're gonna to go to close and load, close and load two. And then just for simplicity, I'm gonna put this on an existing worksheet and just put it right here and then click okay. And now it loads the entire results from all of those steps right here. And this is very dynamic, so I'm just gonna grab another name and make another duplicate, refresh it. Nothing happened because it's a duplicate. Let's change this name a little bit and refresh again. And there we are, we have another record. So to refresh the query, it's really easy. Like I just showed, you right click and then click the click the word re refresh. This is especially helpful, this method, if you are gonna be getting new data periodically and you just wanna set it up one time and have it do all the work for you with the click of a button. Let me know in the comments which method you think will be the most useful for you. Take note, the unique function is only available for Microsoft 365 users, but all the other features I've explored today are available starting with Microsoft Excel 2016.